Hi guys. Welcome to our YouTube channel. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about our <laughs> business model and why we chose it. And we chose this topic partly because a lot of you guys have expressed interest in what we've done and how we're doing it and what we're doing. <laughs> what we're doing. Okay. So, our business model. Yes, we are a game room and an art studio located in the historic Savage Mill Mall. And we, our main model is to bring people together around their hobbies. So yep. things that they like doing, be it playing tabletop games, board games, or doing art. So Bringing people together to do what they love. Yeah, we are building communities. <laughs> yes. Uh, and there's several reasons why we chose like this. Uh, to do it uh, to do uh, bring our model like this and one reason was is the kind of where the game industry was at the time uh, we just got uh, when we just came back in from Japan two years ago um, one of the first things we did is go to origins game uh, game fair in Columbia uh, Columbus Ohio uh, and there, we were talking to a lot of retailers of the state of the industry at the time. We both were working in a game store that was very family-oriented, to the point where it was in the name. <laughs> um, and there was, and that store was getting ready for a big transition, so I kind of needed to see where the lay of the land was. Yeah. And we know that a lot of the small mom and pop brick and mortar type board game stores were not selling their products directly online. And a lot of that had to do with initiatives from the manufacturers in the industry, uh, including famously the Asmodee uh, policy where they would only sell to really big online stores and uh, and brick, uh, purely brick and mortars, which what, it brought a lot of game stores through some hardships. But it was also in a, dr a, a direct response to the number of board game discounters. Um, yeah, because the, the game industry online, there were so many people discounting games that it's really hard to try to make any kind of profit. Um, yeah, there's some people who are cutting games down where on a $50 board game, they'd make two bucks. It's like the wild, wild west of... <laughs> well, that's the thing that everyone loves about the, the internet. online is it, industry, I guess. It sounds, it feels like the wild west. Yeah. Um, but they were trying to straddle that line of saying, trying to reduce the discounters as well, so that they can continue to demand a, relative, a relatively high price for their games, so that they could afford to do all the support that we love as an industry because we love well-paid game designers that are able to go and make a living off their craft so all of their effort is giving us our fun um yeah so i mean it's very it's really needed to have those brick and mortar places so people can go and try out those games but at the same time buying the games from the brick and mortars as opposed to going online where it was cheaper or Amazon. I mean, that helped. Amazon hurt. was one of the ones yeah, that was that allowed hurt, to continue selling. That hurt the the bookstore industry as well. Yeah, you know, local bookstores. But. As a response, uh, a lot of the when we hit that origins, a lot of the game store owners were talking about monetizing their play space, where this traditionally free uh, free environment would now get money. It would now be charged for. So, the traditional game store model. Um, the traditional game store model, which actually thrives pretty well compared to most retail, which is one reason why game stores are doing strong while the uh, while we see Sears disappearing, uh, is to get people in to pl uh, through their events in order to come and play games and have an experience, yeah. which we all know the millennials cry, you know experience over things <laughs> exactly so, um but yeah. then once they bring you in they then charge uh, then you buy stuff from the game store in order to in order to continue enjoying your hobby yes so they were definitely building the community they're able to bring people in for the hobby um that traditional retailers 
we're not able to really do when they're just selling products only. So then comes the problem. <laughs> Those online stores where like 50% of game sales as of last year with the data that we found were selling, 50% uh, um, of game sales were happening online. And a lot of retailers felt like they weren't getting a fair shake from the uh, thing, even with pricing incentive and uh, from Asmodee and a lot of people getting, um, being able to do an extra two weeks release on a lot of new board game releases. Yeah, so um, the brick and mortars would get the first shot at the board games, but I'm not quite sure how well that helped them or not. Certainly the game store that we worked for didn't help that much, but we pursued it heavily. Um, the, uh, so when we decided, when that started closing down, we looked at what was working well in that for that space mm -hmm. and what we really cared about. Yeah, which was building communities and getting people together because we know a lot of people are just going to buy their stuff online anyway. We were deciding to go the route where we are just catering to the events and bringing people together in that way. Yeah, it's kind of like sitting there scratching your chin saying, what would happen if we built the business so we <laughs> don't care where you get your stuff? Yeah. And now we are in this COVID-19 crisis where we can't bring people together in our physical space. But then at the same time, you've got these brick and mortar stores that can't bring people together in their space also. But now they, since they didn't have an online store, they have to scramble to get an online store. And so it's almost like this really terrible yeah, middle it's, ground to be Everyone <laughs> has to do a 180 as far yes. as how their online po uh, policy is just to make this work. Um, while we can't bring communities together in our space, in our space. we, we are doing bringing them together <laughs> through our Discord channel. Yeah, so we've been doing a lot more virtual events. You can go to our website, biggercities.com, and you can join our Discord if you are looking to get into a game or start a game. You can send us an email. Yes, um, but as we said, yeah, this is a three six. It means that for the game stores to survive, they had to do, they had to pull fast three sixty. Yes. It is pivot time. And if you are brick and mortar, it is totally pivoting. Um, we certainly are finding spaces since we did have some of our income based on sales of stuff. Um, we started an affiliate program with bookshop.org. Our goblins have curated a giant list of puzzles and we've got brain teasers, things for kids, for adults like Sudoku books and the, there's blue orange tabletop games and other tabletop games, there's role playing games, lots of Funko Pops and of course Geeky Sweat. So all the stuff on that wish yeah. list on if we just had unlimited funds, yes. what would we bring in? Um, and so we just did a very broad brush list so that people who do want to go and support us through this affiliate program can come and do that. Yeah, so you can buy things from our website as well. We've got things that are not on the affiliate site that we can sell, which are things like the spell cards and the dice. Yeah, because not everything we carry is covered by it. And of course, artwork from artists like myself and Robin, um, yeah. Stuart's sister. <laughs> Um, oil paintings and prints. Which we'll be trying to get more and more of that yes, stuff. Yes, we are still working on getting more of the art stuff on so, our online shop. But so I guess that's it. Our business model, game room slash art studios. If you're wondering what in the world we were doing, you can leave a comment below if you have any questions about what we're doing. And please check us out on Twitch. We have some great content for you out now. There's Tuesdays Game Schooling with Robin where she'll play different board games and say how it can be educational because she is an actual for real legit public school teacher. Then on Thursdays at 3 we are doing Dragon Age, Dragon Age or other other video games. video games because we do want to do more than just these 80 hour RPGs. Yes, and that's at 3 on Thursdays. Then on Sunday is Family Nights, a role playing game. Yep, where we're going through Ghost of Saltmarsh mm -hmm. starting at 7 o'clock. Yes, so I will put a link in the description box below so you Down can in join. Doobly -doo. 
so you can join our Twitch channel. And okay. So yeah, that's you. all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit the bell so you never miss a video. And like, share, subscribe. And thank you to all of our great patrons. Yes. You guys have been awesome. You can join our Patreon list of awesome by going to Patreon slash Three Gear Studios.